All right, so today is Friday, October 16th of 2020, and today's the day I actually start building, so I'm actually really excited. So not much is going to be done today. I'm just going to be doing these uh, light gray walls around the edges of the base plates. So it's going to cover get into focus. Uh, this end right here, all the way down across to the end here, and down to the edge right there. So i got a lot of area to cover. Luckily I have... Or hopefully, I have enough gray brick to uh, to do that. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because everything that's going to be here is the main city area, and all this is going to be elevated, so it's above water level. So I um, I'm going to have filler brick in here because you just can't have it suspended in midair. That makes my life a lot easier if it was. But sadly, uh, the laws of physics don't allow things like that to happen. So I have to have something in the inside, and to cover all that up. So you don't know that like it's it's it's, it's going to be a bunch of random pieces in there filling it up to make everything strong and stable. So 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 when I display this or when other people see this, um, they won't see like oh it's a mess in there. It's just going to be a, a blank wall. So uh, yeah, that's the plan for that. Actually, I might change things up a bit. I think I have a couple ideas, but you know I'll get to that later. So uh, let's cut to the time lapse of me building. Actually, wait. No, uh, don't cut to the time lapse. I just had an idea. <laughs> uh, sometimes I do this to myself, and sometimes it annoys me. Or actually, most of the time. Uh, after I had just finished filming the part where I was about to start building the walls, I had an idea. You know, wouldn't it be cool to have a subway underneath the city? And now I'm uh, getting a little plan laid out here. This will be the subway track, and I will actually have a moving train. I'll make my own custom subway train. That goes around in a loop. So I'll probably have like a station here. And then on top over here of the city. I'll have an entrance coming up. To where you would go down into a station. But there won't actually be a station here. Because this will all be. Everything you see like here. Will be covered. You'll be able to see the, the, the subway. All along down here. And going into here. But all of the other stuff will be covered. Because it will, this area will be filled with support and then uh, continuing over. This, there will be road here, as you can see in the, the plan here. So yeah. <laughs> I do this a lot to myself. I'll be in the middle of something, and I'll be like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I tried that? And that happens a lot, and that could happen too in your building too. Um, it happens to me personally a lot. This is how I get a lot of my ideas. Sometimes that's why it takes me a little bit longer. Because I'll I have an idea during the middle of something. Be like, oh, I'm going to try that real quick. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So then I'll, you know, I'll go back to my original plan or I'll keep going with the new plan. But yeah. So this is how high it's going to be actually. It's my, um, my rough thinking. But I want to have room for the train be able to move obviously so this is actually duplo this is actually what i use as my filler because uh duplo and normal lego can actually go together which i'll show in more detail once i actually start getting into the filler so this is uh having duplo when you're doing a large-scale project like this really helps because it saves so much pieces <laughs> i cannot stress this enough it saves so much on pieces um so uh, my mom, me and my mom have gone to tag sales, yard sales, garage sales, whatever you want to call them. And even this is some of the system when I was just a little kid before I actually was old enough to start playing with like normal Legos um, when I was much younger. So I have this bucket here and another bucket over there. Um, there might be a little more somewhere. I have to double check. But um, this is what I use for a lot of my filler. And it really helps and also makes the builds a lot lighter because if it's just a lot of solid regular pieces the build will get real heavy real fast and you know that you know, when, when you're moving this to a convention that you know that kind of is something you got to care about because you're the one who's picking it up and moving it around the convention center and i've done i've had some really heavy builds and i've almost dropped them a couple of times because they're really heavy and i'm not the strongest of people let's let's be real here but yeah so now I'm actually going to start the walls and it's going to be not as much as I originally intended. It's really just going to be around here and in front of the tracks here and along that edge. So uh, yeah, now, now we'll cut to the time lapse. So.
All right, here we are. Uh, <laughs> finished the walls. I'm actually surprised I was actually able to finish them uh, with all the two by pieces I had. I did a little bit of the one by, but actually, um, uh, actually, those will, I'll probably have enough because I'm actually gonna take some pieces out, which I'll explain why in a second. Um, so <laughs> I'm actually surprised I had enough. You know, even you know, it's just. I didn't think my collection was that big, but you know, I surprise myself sometimes. But yeah. So, uh, it's coming out pretty cool. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, take them parts off of the wall and add detail. Like I had an idea. I'm gonna, I actually went through my bin of printed and sticker pieces and I pulled out a bunch of stuff that would work in the city. So I'm going to use these, uh, like graffiti-like pieces. And I'm going to put them on the subway walls and, um, it'll look like... Someone went in and spray painted the walls, and I think I got a couple extra I can use. Uh, oh, there's this piece I found. This is actually from a Ninjago set, and that's like subway trains, which I'll put in the uh, actual station area. Or the station platform, I guess, along with these, uh, like, caution, yellow caution tape stickers. And I'll also put, like, these uh, movie posters as, like, an advertisement, like, along the wall here. So, yeah. And I also, I added little holes in the wall right here. So what I'm going to do, my idea was, oh, and here I'll put like sewers and I'll have the snakes in there. If there are snakes that live under the, under the city in Ninjago. So I thought that'd be cool to have a little two sewer tunnels and you can look in and see them. And I'll put like a, something you can push down on and it'll do a light brick and uh, you'll be able to see in there. I thought that was a good idea. I'm also not going to use the normal track. I'm actually going to use the 9 volt track I have, which I have enough to do this. Because uh, my thought process at a, at a convention, you know, if I'm going to have the subway running on a continuous loop, um, the batteries can die. And if the batteries die while it's in this area where I can't get to it while I'm, you know, I'm, I'm displaying it because this is all going to be covered and connected together. It's going to be a real pain to get it out, and also, I mean, I, I could get it out easily because it will be in the section, but I'm not going to want to do that while I'm in the middle of displaying it at a show, so I'm actually going to make a, a little slot probably around here or somewhere so I can fit the wire for 9-volt track, and 9-volt, uh, since it's, uh, it's always plugged in, you don't have to worry about, you know, batteries dying, so uh, that's my idea with that, so uh, yeah. Next part I'm going to do is a subway platform and then uh, probably just add more details along these walls here just to make it look nicer I guess. I might use some of the textured bricks I have. Alright, and now I have finished adding a bunch of detailing to the walls and to the uh, train station itself. Or the subway station I guess. Uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> So uh, here I just use masonry bricks just to give the walls just kind of a nice brick texture. So it's just not plain brick. If it was plain brick it would just be kind of boring, but with this it adds just a little, a little bit of spice to it, you know, makes it look cooler. Add those graffiti pieces there. It looks like someone got in and graffitied it. A little keep out sign there. So obviously people didn't follow the rules. Got a beat up octane sign. That's actually supposed to be like that. It's from a uh, like an oil tanker uh, train car. It's an older set, but I had a couple extra, so I thought it would be cool to put one there. Make it look like it's been there a while. We got moving parts danger sign. Some ads for movies and pizza place. Uh, stuff you can't have on the subway, and actually a sign for the subway, and then. Narrow pointing upwards, and some just some fun stuff in the corner there. Yeah. Oh, and then like the don't step over this line thing. So I'm gonna add some tile here, make this smooth, make also make it um cracked. I'm gonna put some uh 
angle tiles and other like rounded tile pieces just to make it so the floor isn't just so smooth it has like little cracks in it like it's you now it's been there a while and then I'm also going to add um, the basing for the track so I'm not going to put like the track I'm not going to use this track specifically but I'm not going to put the track like straight down onto the base plate because then um, when it do does the curves it won't be on flat because the curves can't um, go straight onto the base plate so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise up one base plate or not one base plate, one plate and then uh, you know, add some like uh, fun stuff in, in between it so it's like gravel kind of and like, also some trash too I'll put some newspapers that like you know people have littered and left it there a while yeah oh and also like some air ducts too so it's uh, insulated or there's a flow of oxygen coming into the subway I add those yeah, so that's the next step. So, uh... uh, I'm back and here I've done a lot more detailing. Yeah, it's come out nicely. I even added the stairs that go up to the top, and I was actually really happy with how this railing came out. I'm not too sure if I agree with the uh, the black, but it's really the only color I have that works, or I mean, like that have the that length for the tubing that goes down at the railing. So that will be the entrance that you see from the street. You go in, you come down. There you go. Yeah, it's come out really pretty nicely. Do you like how this turns out so far? So it took me a while to get the stairs right because I kept trying to do different spacing. I tried to do like first uh, two stud long stairs, but then it ended up going to go uh, past this base plate. And I want to keep it all the stairs at least all on one base plate. So um, it would have been too big. Half studs would have been fine. It would be a stud and a half using uh, jumper plates. That's why I have this whole pile right here. But uh, it ended up being just slightly too short or too long because um, it went up to here where I wanted it to go, like up to here as was as far as I wanted to go. But it was just like I think I had like a couple plates left of spacing, and it was just it was just too short just by a little bit. So. I just went back to doing uh, just one stud wide, which I think is fine. I think it turned out great, or pretty good at least. But uh, yeah, so I'll probably make this, since this area, this five studs wide area, I'll probably make this an alleyway, because this is going to start to be street level. So There's going to be one base plate up here, and then another layer of plates um, worth the like sidewalks and that's what the building will start to be on but uh yeah I'm a little worried I'm not sure if this area will be able to support itself um but we'll see we'll see how it turns out I might have to add a support beam here or maybe here but we'll see because I'm not sure how heavy the building is going to be on top of it if the plates will be enough just to hold it it might not be because what I would do is I make the Thicker and I put Technic uh, parts or Technic bricks in it in the middle of it. Um, I kind of caked in between it to uh, make it stronger, but um, that would be too thick, especially because it would just have to be for this area, and it would be noticeably higher than any other area on the city. And I, I don't, it would just it would make things uneven, and I don't, don't want to do that. It would just make things harder and. Um, not work out the way I want it to. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, have to play around with that later on once I actually start to add on the layer. But uh, yeah, I forgot to mention earlier, I did something pretty cool that I never really tried before with um, the signs. So this is actually a two by four tile, but it's actually slightly embedded into the wall. So if you see the one that's for the piece sign, you can see that one sticks out further. It's the same piece, just a different sticker on it. But you can see that one sticks out further, and that's because I used uh, different pieces. Let me see. Yes, I used this type of part. It's, it's 
So when you put these types of pieces, I can focus. There we go. So when you use this type of bracket to get uh, pieces on the side, this is like half the thickness of a plate. And when you're building on the side, um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think how I need to word this right. It's, it's, it's hard to explain for me sometimes because I know how things work in my head, but it's sometimes hard for me to put it in words. This will cause it just to stick out slightly when you put things on its side. Uh, so you have to, so when you're building with these, you have to line things up right. So we might have to use two of these, or you might have to use a certain amount of plates to line everything up with how many, you know, thing uh, studs you have along on the bottom. If you get, kind of get what I mean, um, like it, it will only go so far out. Uh, it will be lined up. You know what I'm trying to say? Hard to explain sometimes, but. As you can see, the way the results end up being is that it sticks out slightly less than it normally would. And for the movie posters, I actually just use jumper plates, uh, these pieces, to uh, allow you to, so it's not sticking all the way out like it normally would. So it makes it more embedded into the wall, which is cool. And then those are actually just uh, pulling off. Here we go. Those, these are actually just sign pieces that have stickers on them. <laughs> the camera's saying it's focused, but it's not. There we go. These are actually just sign pieces and bars on the inside of that wall. That these clip onto. And they stick out slightly, but it, it, I like the result makes it look pretty flush against the wall, which is nice. And, uh, and that's the progress for now. I think next I'm gonna just clean everything up a bit and then I'm going to, uh, I may just do, I might add the roof to this. I'm gonna have a removable roof to this and I'm gonna start working on the ground that the tracks are gonna go on. So I'm gonna make that look like gravel. So I think that's the next step I'm gonna start working on now. Once I clean up a bit of this mess first, <laughs> And, uh, this is what happens when you're building. This is why it helps to have your parts sorted. It's so you know where everything is and you can grab things quicker and just build. Because this has all been, like, all this detailing I've done here and along the walls, I've done it all in, over the course of a day because I have everything I need so I can, you know, test and uh, retry things and just work without having to spend so much time so, uh, looking for pieces. So it really helps to have things sorted. Uh, yeah, so now on to detailing the tracks. Alright, so I've made a decent amount of progress. I've added the, added the roof that goes on top. And this is where I will start uh, building the actual buildings on top of. And uh, I added most of the, or all, most of the detail to the track that I wanted to. You can see I added like uh, these tiles, these brown tiles to make it look like it's wood. And I thought it was a cool little thing to do. So it goes all the way down to there. It doesn't go into it because um, that'd be a bit of a waste of pieces. And also you're not really going to see in there mostly. Because once it's all covered up on top it's going to be like pitch black in there. So you really won't be able to see in there. Now that's actually testing out the 9-volt uh, track. It all worked which is good. But uh, yeah I was a little worried. This, is, this wasn't going to be strong enough, but it is pretty, pretty decently strong. I added like um, a bit of support on the underside just to make sure it all stays up. So hopefully, once I actually start making buildings on here, uh, it doesn't come crashing down. But um, we'll see if it doesn't work. I'll have to come back and try something else. I might have to move this uh, pillar over one stud. Same with uh, over here. I might have to make a little something here. But uh, we'll see. Uh, everything seems to hold together quite nicely. I think once I have buildings on here, it won't be too bad. It might actually make it stronger, but we'll see. Don't know yet. I might actually have, add more pillars here, but yeah. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more detail into like the gravel area. I'm planning on using like a bunch of studs that are in uh, that bin right there. 
give it a more gravelly look. But uh, yeah, it's coming together quite nicely so far. I'm pretty happy with it. All right, now here I have the all the detailing I wanted to add into the tracks complete. And it looks a little dark because I added the, the roofing or the, the, the plates that are all going to be on top, where the buildings are going to be built on top of it. And I also added a couple more support beams just so it doesn't fall through. Because <laughs> when I was putting them on, they were starting to, they were a little too flimsy. So I also added a couple plates on the underside. Not a lot, but a couple. Just so it's stronger. So when I'm building a building on top of here, it's not gonna fall through. But then, yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, one detail I wanna point out that I'm really happy with how it turned out is the nine volt tracks I have are all in the old gray. Lego actually changed the, the way they make their grays in the early 2000s, I believe. So both dark gray and light grays um, that you see now, like this is the modern day dark gray, is different than the dark gray that you see from like the 90s. So it, it's annoying when you're getting like a bucket of used parts saying like, oh, oh, I don't need that gray. Oh, that's the old gray. I don't use that gray. But actually, in this case, it came in handy because all the 9 volt tracks I have are all old gray. So I went through all my old gray pieces, I have them in a separate bin, I went through all the old gray pieces I had, took out all the plates and every size I had, and they're all in here to make it look like a nice kind of different type of rocky effect because, you know, rocks aren't all the same color. So, yeah, it came out pretty good. So this is supposed to be like gravel along the, the base of the subway tracks. And I also use uh, brown tiles to represent like the wood that holds it all together. So I'm really happy with how this came out. Cause I, I thought to myself, cause I just used the track and all my new gray, or the, all the new regular gray, alongside each other. It'd be kind of noticeable because you can kind of see how much of a difference there is between them. Because the old gray is in the metal here, or just under the metal right here that the track as that the subway is going to run on. So, I thought, you know, it's going to be kind of noticeable, at least to me, because I, I kind of pick up on these things I'm building or even just looking at someone else's mock. So I thought, well, why don't I just kind of mix it up a bit, and, you know, it came out pretty good. I'm really happy with how that came out. And I also added some studs and uh, round tiles to uh, make like, some gravel effect. In the front here, I actually added a couple little small details. Kind of hard to see, it's a little dark, but there's a newspaper there, a newspaper there, um, actually right here, really hard to see because it's a shadow, um, there's actually a can, like a crushed can there, you can see that one a little better, there's another crushed can, and uh, there's also, a little hard to see, right next to that stud, right there, right there, is uh, five cents. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of people's trash thrown into the subway, you know, because no city is perfectly clean, so sadly people do litter, so gotta make that more realistic, you know, add that little, little touch of detail, you know. And yeah, pretty happy with how this is coming out so far. So I made a little progress over there, so I'm going to cut to that now. Alright, as you can see here, got a bunch of Duplo here, and I'm putting it into the city as filler. So this is what I mean by having a lot of Duplo, or using Duplo in big uh, layouts like this, is um, <laughs> it really saves a lot of pieces and it makes the builds lighter, and it just makes it so much quicker to actually fill these things up. 
Like, um, see, I, I did this whole section in not even 15 minutes. It didn't take me that long. But as you can see, this is what it's going to look like on the inside. You're not going to see this when it's finished because it will all be covered up. That's what it looks like. So the way how Duplo works is, you know, you just put the du if Duplo fits onto normal base plates. It's, um, so a 2 by Duplo brick is the same as four studs. And then you take, and it's also, it's also two bricks high. So this is uh, the half plate. These are actually one brick high. So that helps when uh, building, knowing the measurements. But uh, the way to get Duplo and normal Lego to fit together is you put uh, normal Lego pieces on top. So here I'll take uh, a yellow piece. And I don't use a lot of yellow to build buildings. Uh, That's why I use it as this filler. So a 2x2 two two yellow brick. It's right on top. Pretty handy, huh? Really helps out to make these things a lot quicker and stronger, too. These things will not come apart if they're done right. Uh, I do this just to save on Duplo so I don't um, use up all my Duplo. Because <laughs> uh, so I do have a lot, or a decent amount, to say. I, I can use up pretty quick. Like this whole, I have to do this whole section here. A little bit over here, not that as much though, and then a bunch over there where there's going to be a mountain, and you know it's, it's going to be kind of not as high here, but especially over there, the mountain will have some height. But around this area, there'll be like a couple, like maybe one or two layers of duplo, um, depending on how high I feel like making the landscape. I think two might be good, but I don't know. We have to get there first. But uh, yeah, and that's how this works. I also have to make sure when I make my subway that it's not going to be too short. I might, maybe I might put some, some of the skinnier duplo plates up here instead. I might have to do that just so I'm not worrying. And I also have to make sure there's enough room for the track. Yeah. I also have to make sure there's enough, um... It's going to be strong enough, whatever I put up here is going to be strong enough to, you know, stay up. You know, it's not going to just fall through. But uh, this is all going to be road right here. So this area has to be slightly lower. That's because there's going to be road here. But uh, the way I do my, I do the roads for the city is that the bricks are on their side. So it's all smooth. Uh, that'll be another section. Um, that's going to be, you know, I still got a while before I actually get there. But, uh, so, but since they're on their side, this should be a lot stronger. So I'm not too worried about it. But especially when I get over here, I might be a little worried. That's why I have these set up right here. I might want to use these because um, the turn, because the road's got to turn here. The turn section of the road, it's not entirely, it's, it's, you know, it's strong, but it's not like the strongest. So I want to be careful, you know, because I want to make things uh, stable enough for when I actually bring this to a brick fair. It's not going to come apart as I'm, t as I'm moving. You know, things are going to break. You know, it's Lego. It's not, you know, permanent stuck together unless I'm going to glue it, which I'm not going to glue my pieces. No, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> if I, you know, if I bring it somewhere, I don't have, I, I'm going to have to fix a couple of things, but I don't want to be fixing the whole city the entire time in there. I won't be able to enjoy the convention, you know. Uh, and also, it will take me forever, and I may not be able to put it yet together 100%, you know. Something, a piece could actually break. You know, Lego is... Lego can break. I actually, I've broken pieces before, and never fun, but it can happen. And you know, I don't want to take the risk. But uh, yeah, so I'll show you guys. So uh, once I finish this area, I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, so I got a mess of Duplo here, and another mess over there. And it's all been put into here, or not all of it. You get what I mean. I've been putting a lot in here. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this is how fast Duplo can fill up a large layout like this. This is why I keep saying it really helps. And uh, I've, this has only taken me a couple hours over, you know, of course, over a couple of days because, you know, I got school and work and all that f fun stuff I got to do. But uh, yeah, it's come along quite nicely so far. So uh, these lower areas are where the road is going to be. And uh, you know, got the track coming through here, which I made a kind of a mock-up for the subway. To get a rough idea to make sure that the uh, I'm gonna go around the curves uh, well and not gonna get stuck or gonna hit the uh, walls. So uh, yeah, this is how wide I'm planning on making it right here. 
so that should be fine. Had it going around the track a couple of times last night, and it uh, fits fine. Uh, yeah, running low on the on the Duplo plates. Uh, hopefully, I have enough, but uh, I should be good. Usually, when I run low on piece, I'll um, or a type of piece I need for something like this, I'll kind of just find a solution or kind of thin them out. You know, just stretch them out. Like you know, maybe take a couple out of there, take a couple out somewhere. So I'm just kind of get a result like this where it looks kind of weird, but you know, this is going to be covered up, and I'm going to have uh, you know the brick um, here too. So, you won't see it, and it should be strong enough, too. But, uh, yeah, it's coming along quite nicely. Now, one little feature I added, you may notice the wires coming out right here. So, you got a little one going into stairs here, and then one going into the roof here. Uh, last night, uh, my dad came down here, I was showing him this, and he's like, Well, it's kind of dark in there, why don't you add lights? And I'm like, well, the main reason I didn't want to add lights to this initially, or, uh, the way I should put it, uh, custom lights, is that I don't want to make it hard for myself to transport this, because remember, uh, these are in sections, so I have to make sure, you know, each section can, I can take out the wires out of each section, and also put them back in for when I'm moving this around. And also, um, you know, it also depends on where I'm displaying it. Am I going to have, uh, you know, batteries, or am I going to have an outlet. Now the thing is, if I use battery, the batteries can die. That's a problem, especially when you're displaying it and the batteries are hard to get location. If I, but also if I use a wire or like an outlet connection, also don't know if I'm going to have an outlet. Now 9 volts is a different story. The 9 volt, you know, just having one, if I can get a hold of one, I should be fine. You know, the wires and easy to reach area. I'm not worried about that. But if I have, you know, outlets coming out from, you know, all ends of the city, you know, it's going to be a bit of a, might be a bit of a hassle, and a lot of wiring, a lot of electrical work, that, you know, it's kind of harder to do when you're doing it like this, and also, you know, I don't need that many lights, because, you know, this city's more in the day, there's not going to be that many dark areas, but, you know, but the only place that is dark is the subway, which was a good point, pointed out by my dad, so I took the power functions, lights that are battery powered, from uh, that battery pack right there, I'm going to find a way to, um, I think those should last a, con a whole convention because it is, there's six AA batteries in there and there's also just lights. It should be fine. If not, um, I might find a way just to make it easy accessible, but uh, we'll see. Still got to think about it. But uh, yeah, why don't I turn them on for you? No, <laughs> that's what I want to do. You can just reach in there. There we go. So it's a nice little bit of lighting. I'm cover this up so you can see it better. Yeah, subways aren't always the brightest of places, but you know, you got like one or two lights in there. It looks really nice, actually. Especially the stairway. Stairway looks pretty cool. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. But, uh, yeah. I'm gonna keep finishing, uh, fill, filling this up, I guess. So, uh, yeah. Alright, I just finished plating all of this. So yeah, looks pretty nice. So all of this right here, all this dark gray is going to be building. So that's going to be pretty cool. Really excited how this is going to turn out. This is all going to be roads right here. These are going to be uh, dividers for the road. Um, I, got, I did this in the last city too where I made uh, road dividers that split each side of the road. And I had like plants in them because you can see them in the, the Ninjago movie, the city in the Ninjago movie, which was pretty cool. And I liked that detailing and gave it um, more of a connection a city that's in like uh a city that's connected with nature that's what that's what i'm trying to say so it's uh pretty cool i'm a little tired <laughs> i've been up for hours doing this so uh once i finish this part filming this part i'm going to bed <laughs> yeah but uh, all this is going to be uh sidewalks i haven't done the corners yet because i'm going to uh i'm going to want to place the road in first before i get the idea how i should be making the corner i get the uh the like do i know like uh, Know the shaping I should I should be making because I just did it like this I could end up making it too small to where it doesn't really you know mesh well you kind of want to make it even the whole way through well I know I can make the corner too steep in and then you know, one side you know gets skinny and then big again you don't want that uh, yeah 
that's where the sewer is going to be. It's going to be pretty cool. I used up the rest of my Duplo here. It's going to go all the way out to here. There's going to be some more buildings here. I'm going to make like a marketplace uh, area here. And I'm going to have like a tree in the middle, which I think will be pretty cool. So I'm going to have to, I have like some random Duplo pieces I can use to fill in the rest over here. But I don't have as much. I might have to use normal brick for part of it. But we're going to see. Because it's going to start to slope downwards when it gets towards the water. Uh, and it's going to be that style of building with the uh, the actual city set and the docks. So it's going to be that that type of style of building. Cause these are the only two sets I want to include because these are the only this, this is what inspired the whole city in the first place. So I'm gonna I want to have you know some type of homage and you know the lower half of the sea that started like to sink into the sea. So uh, yeah, that's the plan. So it's going to start to it's really going to take a steep dive over there. The, the, the steepness is going to get a little gradual, or more gradual, as it gets towards over here. So I need a little bit more Duplo just to fill in this area first, but not that much. A little more. But then I'm also going to need Duplo for over here. And this isn't even half of the city yet, mind you. <laughs> so I still have a lot more to do. And this is all going to be landscaping too. This is going to be uh, more traditional building over here, but that, this is going to be a whole other segment, but I am going to be more Duplo for this, so I'm getting a little worried. Not that worried, a little worried. <laughs> well, I still have a while before I actually go out to present this anywhere in public, so um, I have a while to, scr to scourge up some Duplo uh, garage sales and tag sales and all that, so I'm not too worried. But yeah, These right here are for connecting the road to the uh, the ground, because the roads are going to be built sideways, so I don't know if I take, they're going to be sliding around, so these are going to actually hold them in place. But yeah, coming along pretty nicely. Alright, so I went through this bin of pieces, and I actually found another bin of pieces, and I was able to do this. Added in this whole row right here. So I still need a little more for right there, but I should be good for now to make some more progress right here. So yeah. But that now that's definitely all the duplo I had. This is everything. Uh, yeah. Getting somewhere. Coming out pretty good. All right, everything is covered. Coming out pretty good. So uh, yeah, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna wanna actually um, make this go down. Cause that uh, that needs to stay like that. Cause I want it to be level, like, at least one base plate wide worth to be level. So the water is actually gonna start right there. So I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna wanna translate it from starting all the way down there to coming up all the way here. So. It's going to take a little bit of trial and error, but we're going to see. But I'm going to need to get more Duplo first. Uh, yeah, everything's covered. Really starting to look like the base of a city now. I went ahead and added the bricks and tiles that the road is going to be laying on. I also changed up the dividers, um, the where the dividers are going to be placed. So it would actually fit, and um, I was able to take a couple of Duplo bricks out, which they're now here. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually going to start the sewer now. So, um... Because the sewer is actually going to be covered up by the road, so then I'll do the road, and then the corners, and the subway. And yeah, let's go do it. Alright, so the sewers are finished. Mm, that's pretty cool, huh? So I put some uh, the, the grill tiles and translucent tiles down there to make it look like water's leaking through. It's kind of hard to see on camera. And I also have some snakes in this one, some spiders in there. Because I, I was going to put the snake minifigures in there, but the snake minifigures were actually too big for the tunnel. For the sewers, I mean. So, um, even sitting down, I tried it. But uh, we're a little too high. So I thought, eh. Oh well. <laughs> I don't want to make them any bigger. But, uh, yeah, so the, I, I, I made buttons on top of the light up bricks to um, blend in with the sidewalk. Because the sidewalk is going to be here. So they're obviously going to stand up a bit, but that means like, oh, what's this? Push it down. Oh, 
that's cool. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I think it's pretty neat. And now, time to work on the road. All right, so I'm here doing the road, and I actually uh, encountered a problem. <laughs> so this happens a lot of times when you know you're doing a large scale mock. Some things do get messed up, and I'm going to show you why I have to do to fix this. So I have this section of the road right here, this corner. So if I put it in here, now it will fit in fine. I need both hands to do this, but I gotta hold the camera on one. So this fits in fine, but then I noticed over here, this side of the road. It was wider than this side, so I, you know, I measured it for sure, just using, you know, a piece, and yeah, it's wider. You can see the, the over here, the white overlaps, and over here, it doesn't. So, <laughs> I messed up. I actually need to make this whole, this dark gray section, I need to extend it by two studs. And then I have to extend this by two studs. Move this over by two studs, move this over by two studs. So uh, I'm going to have to tear up all the way down to the end there, move everything over, and then put it back together so uh, this fits. So uh, yeah, you know, things happen, but uh, you know, I'll fix it. It's going to take me a while, but it'll be done, so don't worry. So I just thought I would show you guys because, you know, things happen when you're building. Now, I always. I always try to be careful and measure things out the first time, but I guess I, <laughs> I guess eyeballing it doesn't always work. So uh, yeah, make sure to measure things out when you're building it. All right, so I made the adjustments I need to fix. So now this is over, or this is out more by two studs, and this is shrunk more by two studs. So I fixed it. it took me a couple hours, but I got it. I also added um, these to make it longer out here. So when I place roads down, they're not sinking and they have support. But uh, yeah, the corner came out pretty nicely. Got to fit in real nicely. So should be good. So once I get the other corner in, I'm gonna make the sidewalk curve here, and then I'm gonna uh, copy it or mirror it over on that end over there. Uh, yeah, I'm also gonna mirror this piece the exact same way I did this piece on that side. I'm just gonna mirror it because I really like how the curves. Because these are gonna be um some dividers here so like people can't cross over you know just gonna be like little little pillars to like provide safety you know like all that fancy stuff but uh, yeah come along quite nicely so uh, yeah gonna do that next now all right you made a little bit of progress on the sidewalk but not much but as you can see I added street lights so that's gonna be pretty cool but uh, I did encounter a problem. The way I want to do the street lights is like this. But the problem I have is I don't have enough of these pieces right here. These are these like uh, paint roller pieces that like, are coming in a couple sets in black. But I only have five of them, so just these few right here. So this is a, a good, good like kind of a example of how to use BrickLink uh, for building large scale mock like this. So. Uh, I'll go into more detail later what BrickLink is, but BrickLink is basically eBay for Lego. It's just, you can buy anything Lego on there. So, um, you can buy individual pieces, you can buy sets, minifigures, even the boxes. Just just the empty box for sets. So, uh, it's pretty cool. I can, I can spend days just poking around that site looking at stuff. So, I went online to BrickLink. I ordered, I think, 27 of these paint roller pieces to go with the rest of these uh, light posts. So yeah, I'm going to get back to adding on to the sidewalk, but I just wanted to show you guys what's coming. So I just made that order uh, yesterday, I think. So it's going to take a couple days to get in, but I'll show you guys uh, the order when I get it. So yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. Alright, so the sidewalk is complete, and I've also laid the groundwork for the dividers. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So, in, in all the dividers, I'm going to have some trees. It'll look pretty cool. 
And some of them are a little taller than others. I thought that'd be a nice way to make them a little different. It's crooked. And yeah, come along pretty nicely. Still gotta put in all these trees, but actually, I actually just got in my Brickling package for I can uh, complete the light post. So I'm gonna show you guys what I ordered and really, you know, why I gotta use Brickling. All right, so here's everything I got in the Bricklink order. So uh, this right here, these are the uh, paint roller parts that I need to complete the uh, light posts. Because I do not have enough of these. I only have five and I need 32, so here's 27 in this bag. So uh, so I had to use Bricklink because I definitely did not have enough. <laughs> and I really want to do the light post this way and I th think it's the best design that um, will fit into the style of Ninjago City. And uh, yeah, so, you know, I even though I do have a lot of Lego, I don't have all of the pieces that I do need or want. So, time plays easy, you gotta go in order. So, say if you're building a mosaic and you don't have enough, like, uh, one by one plates of a certain color to complete your picture, you, you can't just, you know, like, say, oh, I guess I can't do it then, or compromise or something else. If you wanna do it right, you're gonna have to, you know, order the parts, you know, like if you're building a house, you know, you need, if you run out of wood, you're like, oh, well, I guess I can't complete the house, or I guess I'll just go use some sticks. Uh, you're going to have to go out out somewhere and, you know, get the parts you need. So that's what I did with this. So I got these paint roller pieces, so that will go into the city and it'll be complete. And also here, I also got some bricks. I don't have a lot of dark green and dark blue bricks, and I want to use these colors in the city. So I went ahead and ordered some more, because I, I don't need them right now, but I know I'm going to need them in the future. So what I do when I go on Bricklink, um, even though if I may be ordering just one thing or a couple things, I'm going to look through the person's store and say, like, oh, this piece is at a good price. Uh, maybe I'll pick a couple of those, a couple of those because I need them. Especially like, uh, these pieces. I actually got some teacups. And some tea kettles. I'm not exactly sure. There's a specific name for each one. <laughs> I don't drink tea, as you could probably tell. But uh, these are perfect uh, for people in Ninjago City because you know a lot of people in uh, Asian countries like Japan and China drink tea. So uh, these are perfect, and I don't have enough, so I ordered ten cups and four kettles. So uh, that'll come in handy later. And also some dark red bricks because I will need the. I use a lot of dark red when I'm building, and I have a lot of uh, dark red like 1x2 bricks so it helps to have 1x1s to help with uh, interlocking and just making the building stronger. Also some uh, dark blue 1x1s for the same thing and also uh, these plates I I really like these pieces and especially in brown I can use them to make a pretty cool wall texture so I wanted to get some more of these because uh, in the last version of the city I did I used up all the ones that I had and I actually didn't have enough so these will come in handy, so I want to do that again. So that's what I got in the package. Now, usually when you order from uh, a seller, it's, so it's like eBay, you're ordering from a seller, and uh, you know you, you go on you go on and see what that seller has, and you buy them, you pay them through PayPal or another service um, to pay people online. So uh, it's pretty simple. It's really just eBay for Lego, what Bricklink is. And usually, um, if you never used Bricklink before, what helps? Uh, you want to count the pieces you got because sometimes you no know, people make mistakes. You now we're all human. You could count something wrong. So usually uh, most Brickling sellers will have a paper in the. Uh, this isn't for this order. This is for an order I made uh, towards the beginning of the year. Uh, as you can tell, minifigure parts. I don't. Um, these aren't for the city. But uh, so it helps to have these because actually when I made this order, I had ordered uh, three of these legs here. And actually, one of them wasn't Lego, so I had to uh, get a refund of that because these were like two dollar legs. Yeah, two dollar legs. Hang on, so uh, two dollars is a lot, a lot for a Lego piece, actually. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it helps to count the pieces because you know if you get it wrong, if the seller gets it wrong, they can either send you the piece, send you the you know the right piece, or they re they refund you because uh, you know. Because if they don't refund you, then you know you can't go buy it somewhere else if you didn't get the piece. But uh, yeah, so getting these order forms is a typical thing in a Brickling order. So see all like the different parts, and all of them have like certain names. Especially when you get to like the minifigure parts, 
every since like a lot of minifigure parts are the same, it's the same piece but it's just with different printing. It goes like really in depth on what the printing is, so or the in the part description. So uh, yeah. So that's really what you kinda get in a Bricklink package. And uh that's probably and really why Bricklink is a really helpful service. Um when you're building large mocks like these. Because even like, uh, cause I, I made this order with all these minifigure parts because I want to make another build that isn't Ninjago, but I want I needed some specific minifigure parts that you know, I didn't have. Um, like these Stormtrooper helmets, I wanted some more Stormtrooper helmets for um, some figures. So I, yeah, so it comes in, because if I wanted these Stormtrooper helmets, I didn't want to use Bricklink, I'd have to go and buy like, I think, how many again? I got nine here. So I would have to have gone and bought in, I think, three sets that would have cost me $90, $90 or $60, between $90 and $60, where instead I went on Bricklink, and I paid $1.70 for each, so in total it was $15 for nine heads, and my total order ended up being $36 when I ordered everything else. So I think it was it was more worth it when you're buying like a specific piece to go on Brickling sometimes. Other times, like if you're buying a minifigure, I say get the set that it's in if, you, if it's not retired already. Because if you're buying uh, minifigures, minifigures are usually the most expensive part of a Lego set. So a figure can be like 10 bucks when the set can be 20 and uh, you're like, well, if I spend another 10 bucks, I can get the other figures that are in the set if it's more than one figure, and also a bunch of pieces for instead of spending, you know, 10 bucks for only one figure. So that's usually how I look at it when it comes to buying off of Bricklink. It really just got it has to just kind of deal with um, what you're getting and what you're looking for. So in my case, paint rollers definitely use Bricklink. If you're trying to buy a mini, just a mini figure, I'd say just get a set. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's go up. Uh, Put these in the city. All right, so all the lights are in the city. And I gotta say, it looks pretty good. I'm really, I'm really glad I made this order now. <laughs> that's for sure. Look at that. Ah, oh, that's sick. Goes all the way down there and around. That's awesome. Especially when you look at it from like here. It actually looks like a nice, really long street. That's really cool. That's cool. All right, so now to finish up the dividers. All right, the dividers are finished, and they look awesome. Yeah, so I used, I made the trees different heights, too, this time around. Give a little more variation. Look at that, that's cool. It goes all the way down there. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know what to say. It's just, that's cool. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm going to add some more, like, a little foliage, like, some little grass pieces in, in between the trees and all that to make it more, uh, lively, I guess I can say. Let's do that next. All right, so I've added the plants to the dividers, and they look pretty good. So it's nothing really that special. I just added a bunch of uh, just like two different uh, leaf pieces that I have, like the like the stems and just the actual leaves to make like bushes and tall grass. So nothing really uh, special. But just you know, using them in different ways to make uh, some cool looking details. Yeah, I think it came out pretty good. Ow! <laughs> I just stepped on Lego. <laughs> That's what happens when you you have Lego all over the floor when you're building a project. You tend to step on them sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm really happy with how this turned out. So I think the next part and the last part for this uh, 
episode is actually building the subway that's going to be running around down here. Because really, all I can do now for the base is complete. And so I, once I get more Duplo, I'll add fill in a little bit more over there. And I'm going to need Duplo for that whole side of the city too. So I'm definitely going to need more. But I think uh, for this section, for this first episode, I'm just going to do the subway. That will be running under here, and that will be it for this part. It's really just going to be the base of the city and getting the subway uh, running. So, yeah. So, uh, let's get to work. Alrighty. I have finished everything for this first episode. Woohoo! Took me, oh, almost a month, actually, I think. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this has uh, come out. I'm really happy with how this is looking so far. So the base is almost complete. I need to get more Duplo for the filler in there. But this whole section with the subway, all of this is complete. So yeah, here's the subway. It's a little short. I'm not sure if I'm going to put people inside. And I, I really, you actually can't fit a figure inside here. It is open on the inside. So I can put something inside if I want to. But uh, minifigures can't stand up because of the, the way the height of the base is. And... It's, it can't be too tall because it will hit things on the inside that are supporting up the road and all that. Uh, I think I spent an hour last night just trying to dig it out. And, and like I had to like pull up parts of the road and pull out those gray sections over here. I had to push them aside so I could uh, get the train, the, the, the subway that got stuck in there. So uh, yeah, that, was, that wasn't really fun on my part, but... Uh, it, it came together quite nicely. I might go back and modify this a bit because it kind of looks a little, a little boring. But I mean, it's going to be in constant motion, so you really won't see it that much. But I did add, I did use these stickers on here. I thought those were pretty cool. Made it look pretty nice. But then, yeah, let's get everything moving. I'm going to turn on these lights for the subway. I put up a couple people around the city to make it look cooler and give some life to the city. You know. But, uh, yeah, all the sidewalks are done, all the roads and dividers are done, the main, this, most of the base is done. But, uh, yeah, let's get the subway running. It's on 9 volt uh, track, so I don't have to worry about power. Should probably slow it down a bit. I honestly could watch this all day. I'm really happy with how this turned out. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Let's get a cool shot here. All right, that was that was that was pretty cool. Right, let's get it back up to the front, and I'll turn it off. There you go. Yeah. I'm really happy with how this is looking so far. So I did a little cleaning up too. So it looks nice for camera. So uh, yeah. I guess that's it for episode one. Alright, and that's going to be it for episode one. Uh, next part, episode two, uh, I'm definitely going to start working on, I, have, I want to have a festival in the city that's going to, going to be happening. So I'm going to have like a moving kind of like celebration dragon in the road. Um, that's going to take me a while to make. So I think most of episode two is going to be uh, just working on the mechanics for the dragon. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be starting any building. Uh, I might start a couple like at least get the groundwork for some buildings 
but I really kind of want to complete the rest of the base before I actually start working on any building. It just I, I kind of like to do things in a certain order, but I might have to break the order to uh because it's going to take me a while to get more dupe load actually because I have because this is all the dupe load I have, so I have to still fill in all of this back there. So it's going to take me a while to get all that, but I'm going to get there. I got to get there at some point. So uh but yeah. Uh you know Share with your friends and family who think you might be interested in seeing what's coming next with this documentary. I'm really happy with how things are turning out so far, and I hope you guys are too. And, uh, yes, uh, also follow me on Instagram. I post more uh, frequent posts of what's happening in the city uh, more often. So instead of just waiting, you know, a couple weeks to see the next episode, you can follow me there and you can see... Like, I teased like, stuff with the subway, like, weeks ago. Um, so yeah. Uh, also you can follow my subreddit. I'm going to link to all of this in the description. You can follow my subreddit. I'm posting there if you prefer Reddit. And uh, yeah. That's really it. So uh, yeah. Stay tuned for more and you know, thanks for watching. Have a good one.